Hey guys, I'm just leaving the bank here. I had to go to the ATM and now I'm on my way to, of course, Costco. I need to go run my usual weekend errands. Um, I have been getting some questions about blue light protection and sunscreens, tinted sunscreens. Um, you know, there's no way to know to what extent a sunscreen protects you from uh, blue light. Blue light or HEV, those wavelengths, they contribute to early onset and more stubborn hyperpigmentation, namely in people with medium to deep skin tones. Now, sunscreens can offer some protection against that if they have zinc and if they have iron oxides. But it's not merely the presence of zinc or the presence of iron oxides. It's like, okay, check the box. It's got blue light protection. What ends up going into the extent of blue light protection is not only the presence of iron oxides, but having a multiple uh, red, yellow, and black, the three different types, because they, they cover um, each other in a sense uh, as far as the kind of spectrum of that HEV range of light uh, you know they they peak in certain areas of it and so having the blend of the three is ideal having zinc in there as well also gets you more I would think uh, it gets you something so in other words uh, a zinc oxide containing tinted sunscreen is likely although I don't have proof of this, but it is very likely better at protecting against the pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light than, say, a tinted chemical sunscreen. Not saying it's not possible, I'm just saying it's more likely that you're getting better blue light protection from a tinted mineral sunscreen. I think they're easier to formulate, too, as opposed to a tinted chemical sunscreen. That's why you don't see very many of them. The only one that comes to mind, although I'm sure I'll remember some others, the one that comes to mind is Copper Tone has, like, this glow sunscreen that um, is actually kind of nice, believe it or not. It's, like, SPF 30, and it kind of has this glitter. It's got glitter in it, unfortunately. But it gives your skin that kind of shimmery look. It has fragrance in it, but the fragrance isn't bad. And it is a really good sunscreen for when you're sweaty because it's got alcohol denaturant in it. And that makes it more, um, not, not as heavy. Heavier sunscreens, like creams and stuff, if you're going to be outdoors doing sweaty activity, it can make you feel hotter because it kind of block some of the evaporation of sweat which cools the body anyways so getting back to the tinted sunscreen thing um, you know manufacturers they're not required to to prove that their product protects against those HEV wavelengths now the other piece of it is not only having iron oxides but also how the concentration of them matters and the um, and the formulation of the product overall. Same thing with protection against UV. You know, you can't you can't look at a product and and determine UV protection by the ingredients. That's something that the internet needs to get through its head. You can't just look at ingredients of a sunscreen and compare and, and figure out that it's going to protect you or not. You simply can't. Um, so same holds true with trying to figure out the HEV thing. The only thing is like if they would actually do some testing and, and you know confirm that they had done that which they don't um so concentration of the iron oxides matter and really where you are going to find that are a lot of times in the tinted sunscreens that are meant for deeper skin tones that have a deeper shade those offer some of the best, at least from the data that I've seen of people who are testing this stuff, which is good because people with deeper skin tones, their skin type is more affected by those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. Now, I talk about it being pro-pigmenting. By that, I mean it, um, it causes early onset and more stubborn hyperpigmentation. So, for example, if you've got uh, a pimple or something or a bug bite it's going to heal with a dark mark is more likely to thanks to blue light so the iron oxides the tint that all kind of can help with that um so, same thing with melasma but for people of all skin tones the those wavelengths of visible light they also generate a lot of free radical damage in the skin um, they generate uh, reactive oxygen species 
So anyone could benefit from using tinted sunscreens that protect against blue light. Unfortunately, it's not standard protocol to assay them. Color Science does, and they have shown that all of their sunscreens protect against pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light, but the tinted ones, like the even up one, has even greater protection than like their, their regular Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Face Shield, I think it's called. Um, the one that kind of gives like a nice, almost dewy look to the skin. It's a real neutral shade though. I don't personally think it goes over particularly well with deeper skin tones. Uh, but that being said, that particular product does protect against pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. They've shown that. But the um, tinted ones, like the Even Up, have a deeper tint, even better, even up, even better protection, even greater protection against those wavelengths. Um, so yeah, they actually test, and maybe that is why their products are so expensive. They put you know a lot of effort into getting it right. Um, so yeah, I thought I would cover that. Oh gosh, you guys, today is a dreary, dreary day. It's cloudy. Why not? I'm wearing the. Um, MD Solar Science Tinted Lip Balm in the shade red. I love this, although it's gonna come off of my mask when I go into Costco. I'm hoping I don't get dumped on uh, with the rain. I have this little jacket. Oh, I'll have to show you guys when I get home. I'm wearing bike shorts from the Bayleaf. Remember the Bayleaf jacket that I got on Amazon? The UPF jacket? I'm not wearing it because it's in the wash. Um, remember I was like, they make bike shorts that get good reviews. I'm going to try them. I got a pair and I, I just put them on for the first time today and I really like them. They have a pocket on the side. I'll show you guys when I get home, but so far so good. We'll see if they dissolve in the wash, but the Bayleaf UPF jacket that I got has held up in the wash quite well and hasn't like shrunk or anything. So yeah, it's a little follow up on that. Oh, speaking of follow up, my mascara. Remember I bought a new mascara last weekend at CVS, the Maybelline, I can't remember what it's called. I'll put something in here so you guys know what I'm talking about because my brain doesn't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, love it. Superior to that Glossier Lash Slick, which I used to love, but I don't know if they changed the formula or what is going on with that. It's just not the same. I love this mascara from Maybelline, but it's not as good as Thrive cosmetics nothing compares to that 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 one is worth worth the extra price but Maybelline has always in my opinion done mascaras justice and my favorite has always been has always been the Maybelline Colossal um, but I stopped wearing I haven't worn that in a while I probably would go back to it but this one I really like and what I like about it is the wand has like a bounce to it. The applicator, which I think is really helpful for applying to, you know, getting kind of good even application. Yeah, I really like it, I highly recommend it. And I think on Amazon, it's like eight bucks. I'll link it down below uh, if you're in the market for a mascara. Oh, the other thing about it, it doesn't flake and it doesn't, stick onto your, you know, sometimes mascaras are too goopy and they end up getting on your um, upper upper lid area. I can't stand that. Um, this one has not done that. I'm getting a spot in the indoor garage. That's good in case it rains. I won't, I won't get wet. Oh, we're coming up on that good lighting here. Let's see if we have it today. I actually kind of look, oh, I'm not so good. I don't know. I think it's gonna be crowded in there because I'm going today a little bit later than I usually do because I had a phone call this morning that took longer than I anticipated. But uh, if I'm able to, I'll vlog in there. Sometimes, like I was telling you guys fairly recently, if you watched, um, whenever I'm out in public vlogging, I swear there'll be nobody around. And as soon as I pull out the camera, it is like flies to honey. Barely walked into the door and I've already got two articles of clothing. Oops. I got this Maddie M. 
I like it because it has a knot. And then I got just a regular V-neck tee here. Stickers. Come over here and look at the shades. Do they have any good wraparound ones? Those are the best for protecting your eyes against UV. Like these Oakleys. Seem pretty good. I'm in the market for some new hampers. These are nice, $19.99, except I feel like this like starts to smell and you have to like wash it and stuff. I'd rather have like a plastic one that you can just wipe out with a disinfecting wipe. Well, I made it out of Costco in one piece. Woohoo! Um, I feel bad for the, so, you know, Costco used to have the, sample ladies handing out samples and i have to say that is one thing that i'm kind of happy about thanks to the pandemic is that they no longer have samples because the samples people would like line up and clog up the aisles and then they'd like go back multiple times and like it was and, and then they like hover around the free sample table like vultures yeah so it's a smoother shopping experience now that we don't have the free samples fortunately the samplers still have their job but now they just have them like i kind of feel bad for them they just have them like at their little stand with a glass cage or the the plastic shield around them and they like have whatever it is they're trying to get you to buy but now that there's no sample like nobody really pays attention to them so they just kind of sit in their little box and they're like lemon almonds lemon almonds so i like try and make you know acknowledge them but then when the mask on, it's like... <laughs> Enterprise Renaissance. I rented a... I rented a truck from an Enterprise Renaissance once. It's like a moving truck. I moved myself. I will never do that again. It was like many years ago. I moved myself out of an apartment. It was like, oh, I don't need to hire movers. Oh, I never again. It was not worth whatever couple of hundred bucks I saved. Not worth it at all. That move was really when I came to realize, like, uh, this was before Marie Kondo or whatever. And I had lived in this one particular apartment for so long. I was not as much of a I'm not I don't consider myself a minimalist but I'm very mindful of like my possessions and I like to do a decluttering and donation of stuff back then I didn't do that and that one particular apartment I was like how do I have all of this stuff it's like you know papers trinkets from things that I just like held not even intentionally holding on to, but I just would, you know, put them in a box somewhere. I was like, why do I have all this stuff? So I, it seemed like that particular move, I was just getting rid of stuff and getting rid of stuff. And it was like months and months of me <laughs> decluttering. And that's really when I started making a concerted effort to declutter more often. Anyways, I'm here at Kroger. So hopefully I do not get acid rained on. <laughs> But you can see how well that lipstick held up under the mask for a trip into Costco. Not perfect, but still on there. Oh my gosh, check out these funny pot succulents. You have a piece of my heart. I like you a whole lot. These are adorable. I love the miso one. And they have this like, this looks like a Valentine's, Valentine's leftover. All right, I'm back. Here are those bike shorts I was talking about. They're really comfortable. They have a little pocket here on the side um, and they're high-waisted. Yeah, pretty comfy. Not bad. Well, hey guys, I just finished up a runzo on the treadmill and I need to wipe it down. I don't, I can't remember the last time I wiped my treadmill down, which is 
nasty. I need to get like the little disinfecting wipes or spray to keep in here so that I remember to do it. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go get some <laughs> some uh, like spray, multi-surface spray. Let's be honest though, multi-surface sprays are kind of just perfume. <laughs> This Grab Green all cleaner, all cleaner purpose, all cleaner purpose, <laughs> all purpose cleaner. I uh, can't say enough good things about this. I get it on iHerb, of course. 10 times better than Mrs. Meyer and her Iowa Pine. <laughs> Jen Chapin, the YouTuber that I like to watch, she lives in Iowa and she commented that there's like really no such thing as an Iowa Pine. She doesn't know where that comes from. Anyways. If you were curious as to whether or not I had organized this, the answer is of course not. Cause why clean thing, why organize this when I know exactly where everything is? It's my little corner of chaos. But I did have, sorry to blind you, I did have my, uh, the maintenance people come in and change my light bulb to a brighter bulb and it has made a huge difference. I don't know if this is correct. It's probably not, I'm probably gonna destroy the treadmill by doing this, but it needs a wipe down. Anyways, you guys were asking me about this. I got it on Amazon and I was skeptical when I bought it. It wasn't too expensive for a treadmill, but it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't something that you'd pick up at the Dollar Tree, if you know what I mean. But for a treadmill, it was pretty reasonable. So I was expecting it to be, you know, a ticking time bomb and it has lasted a year and I run on it every single day. I get a good run on this. Um, obviously not as good as like doing a trail run or something, but hey. I get exactly the workout that I need on this, the run that I'm looking for. And I also like to walk on it a fair amount. Yeah, if you hate working out, I recommend getting a treadmill. And I know people are like, what, why? I mean, that's like the cliche, right? People are like, this is the year I'm gonna start working out and they get a treadmill and then it ends up being something that they store stuff on. But I'm telling you, if you find yourself sitting and like doing tasks on your phone, get a treadmill because you can walk at a slow, a slow speed and before you know it, you will clock a lot of steps. And I mean, you don't have to do an intense workout, just get your body moving. It's the only, it's the only one you get. And I think sedentary lifestyle is really what leads to a lot of health problems. Well, hey guys, I know where we last left off, I was cleaning my treadmill and then I just kind of went on a cleaning binge and like pulled out the vacuum and dusted a bunch of stuff. Yeah, it's amazing. Those little nooks and crannies that you neglect, they get nasty. So I did that and took a shower. I'm gonna hop in the bed and go to sleep. I thought I would wrap up the vlog now and thank you guys for making it to the end. I hope you had a good time. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.